All right, all right, I'm back again. And this time I'm going to be reviewing a video by that chapter by the main man, Maiko. Uh, I actually haven't seen this one yet, so it's going to be as new for me as it is for you guys. Um, it looks like it was released just yesterday. And I know he releases every Tuesday and Friday, I believe he said. Uh, but yeah, I'm kind of anxious to hear about this one. He always does such a good job. And like I said, there, there are tons and tons of, you know, uh, YouTube creators that, you know, do all sorts of type of things. Uh, but I really think in his genre, he, he really puts together quite... I mean, he would make a hell of a good producer, a hell of a good uh, anchor, reporter. I mean, the dude puts in a lot of work. You could tell he's very bright. And, uh, yeah, you could see it in his channel, by the way. You know, his uh, member, or by his member. God, I always get all these things wrong. By his subscribers list, you know, growing and growing. Uh and that's just awesome. I mean, I remember when I first came across him, I suggested him to like four different people uh, that were like, oh, you know, I like true crime stuff. I'm like, you got to listen to this dude. I'm like, he's funny, but he's not funny about the crime. He's funny about the assholes who committed the crime, you know, uh, and they got hooked. And that's what I like about him is that he he definitely has a heart, you know, for the victims. But just like I would, yeah, he rips to shreds, you know, those sick bastards that, you know, pull the stupid shit that they do. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. It's this one is called um, The Disturbing Lizzie Marriott Affair. Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this whole video, uh, what I'm going to do with you today is take you on a trip to New Hampshire. Join us, New Hampshire! You know, if you work hard enough, you could soon be alongside such, such luminaries as Florida, Texas, Ohio. This story is messed up. And before I begin, I put out two videos every week, so please subscribe if that's for you. And let's get into this one. When universe Yes, absolutely. Go subscribe to his channel, like his video, like all his videos. He does a hell of a good job. Okay, what happened to the sound? Ah, gee. I'm a dummy. I'm sorry about that, guys. Ah, uh, you see, before my computer updated, I would have been able to edit that out, and you would have never seen the stupidity that <laughs> is me right now. Blocking out the sound, like, what is going on? Going into full freakout mode. Uh, but anyways, let's continue. Every week, so please subscribe if that's for you. And let's get into this one. When University of New Hampshire student, 19-year-old Elizabeth Lizzie Marriott, vanished in 2012, the search was on. It would eventually lead to a disturbing individual and a couple who would not take no for no answer. Let's give it a go! In eastern New Hampshire, you'll find Durham, you'll find Dover, and you will find the University of New Hampshire. One of America's top public universities, it's home to over 15,000 students doing their thing. Learning, of course, with a major in drinking. Founded in 1866, its most popular majors are business, engineering, and uh, biological shit. Which is biological. It's close to the sea, and that was important to one Elizabeth Marriott, who was, you know, like there in uh, 2012. She was a sophomore studying marine biology at the University of New Hampshire. 
having previously studied at Manchester Community College for her freshman year. Elizabeth was originally from Westboro, Massachusetts, and after graduating high school in 2011, she was eager to begin studying marine biology. Sharks, how do they work? As a kid growing, she would always have little turtles or frogs and whatnot. She had previously volunteered at the New England Aquarium, and so now, at 19 years old, she was following her dreams. She was living with her aunt and uncle in Chester, New Hampshire, in the autumn of 2012. She had moved to be with family closer to university, about a half hours away. And so as she was hitting the books, uh, she also got a part-time job working at a Target in Greenland. There's a town called Greenland. And now living out of her home state, but not not too far away, she was making she's making new friends, new friends at work, new friends at university. Hey, life was good. It was that cool, crisp New England fall that the fall came. On the 9th of October, the weather was cooling, about 11 degrees Celsius. Scattered clouds, light breeze, and rain was in the air. It was that evening that Lizzie Marriott disappeared. That dark evening, she left class late. She was out after 8 p.m. And from there, she was due to visit a friend's apartment over in Dover. Maybe a 15 minute drive. This wasn't a surprise or anything. She had left a note at her aunt and uncle's place saying she was, you know, heading over there and, you know, don't wait up. Don't worry. Well, when there was no sign of Elizabeth, Lizzie, uh, the following morning, they worried. But they assumed, you know, she'd just crashed at her, at her friend's gaff and then, you know, she'd work, she'd college, she'd come home. No chance. She'd left on Tuesday and then by Thursday morning, that's when the real worry and the panic set in. Lizzie Marriott was reported missing to the police. All right, we're asking for your help tonight, so listen up now. The FBI and state police have joined now in a case of a missing UNH student. They are asking for help finding Lizzie Marriott, last heard from after class at UNH on Tuesday night, and since then, all contact has been lost. I mean, this is the parents' nightmare. You know, not knowing. Lizzie Marriott's father says he's hoping this is all a misunderstanding. There are so many what ifs that I don't want to think about right now. She did send a text message out. Uh, uh, she told her a couple of friends that she was going to be over their house. Police say her last cell phone activity was traced to Dover around 10 p.m., but she never arrived at her friend's apartment. She is a missing person. We haven't ruled anything in or anything out. Our one goal has been to find her and to bring her home to her parents and her brother. Can you say anything about this new group of friends she was supposed to meet up with in Dover on Tuesday night after class? I can tell you that we are aware of those individuals and state police is contacting those individuals. Lizzie's car was eventually tracked down to the University of New Hampshire's uh, car park, but there wasn't really a whole lot to go on from there. After all, Lizzie had said she was going over to a friend's house in Dover. So had she made it or no? And the police didn't know who these friends she had said, she'd wrote that little note, who they were. You know, she'd made so many new friends in work and in college. There was like friends, okay, friends, yes, friends. Her, her family who had driven up from Massachusetts. Who was they? They were eventually tracked down and it turned out that that evening, Lizzie had made plans to go and meet up with a new friend. A new friend named Kat McDonough. Kat and Lizzie had met working together in T -t 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 Target. Cat, she was, uh, <laughs> kooky. Another friend of Lizzie's, also a fellow co-worker in Target, was the one who had told Lizzie's family her plans that evening. And in fact, this friend, name of Nate, had been texting Cat to see if she knew anything about what was going on. He was texting Cat, but she texted back, uh, well, you know, she never made it. Don't know what you're on about. I haven't seen her. Maybe she never made it from the university at all. Kat was living at the time in Dover with her boyfriend, Seth Mazalia. He was a little older than Kat. He was 30 years old, so a decade older than herself. They had met each other at a local theater. <laughs> Look at them here, having a grand old time. As I am, an honest puck. <laughs> she forgot the I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right, don't worry about it. Oh my God. Yep, settle down yes, and I, ca yes. catch up. <laughs> Are you going to burst into song? I am. Well, yeah. yeah. Do you want to? 
Um, I got one off of You go right there, right? Even my audition wasn't that bad. <laughs> I've got a crow. How can I hide it when deep down inside it just tickles me so? Well, she certainly had some pair of lungs on her. And here's Seth. Hell yeah. Uh, five, one, two, three. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> and Pyramus, you'll figure it out fast enough. Quill, rush, conclude, and quell, come tears, confound, outsword, and wound. Thus. You know what I find with a lot of uh, theater actors and I'm not talking about the ones that are on Broadway. I'm talking about the ones that are coming up through theater like this is that they have, they, they, they're hyperbolic in their delivery. Uh, meaning they really over exaggerate it. Um, it doesn't make me a professional because I filmed commercials in a movie, but I'm just saying, from my perspective and from how I've seen theater actors, because a lot of, there's, I mean, shit, there's a lot of great actors that started in theater. Um, but many of them didn't act quite like this. Um, so, yeah, kind of interesting dynamic. Die, die. Thus, thus, thus. Well, he's certainly a community theater actor, I'll give him that. He's a, he's a wild man, watch out for this guy, he's crazy. And perhaps Kat should have started watching out for him because, you know, they met at the theater, they started dating, and then she completely changed. So last year, I paid nothing for electricity, and I actually made money by using a special program that paid me. She became a bit more out there, though also not. She cut herself off from her friends and her family. She wouldn't, she wouldn't hang out anymore. No more phone calls. She isolated herself from her own life. Seth was all consuming. I mean, look at this guy, like a moth to a flame. Seth was an all or nothing kind of guy. He had grown up on the coast in Portsmouth. He was an instructor in your karate. Sensei Seth, he went by. He was an obviously skilled actor. And he even had a degree from the University of New Hampshire in theater. He was a graduate of the Citizens Police Academy and a certified EMT. He was now working in Best Buy. So as you can see, he had varied interests. Uh, you know, uh, emergency services, cops, acting, fighting. But, uh, so he, I mean, I guess you could kind of say he was like a jack of, jackass <laughs> of all trades. Uh, but hold your horses because he had one more interest that he was just dogging about. He was mad about it. You'll figure it out fast enough. When he wasn't recommending what new uh, video game to buy in Best Buy, he was big into the B. B for bondage, BDSM, all that sort of stuff. Whips and chains and all that. He was a hound dog for it and he was always looking for some sexual slaves and he was doing so with Cat. They had this little BDSM fetish, and it even placed some ads looking for fresh meat. Yeah. Now, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna kink shame, you know, whatever you're into, as long as it's, you know, you got, you got the consent, it's all, it's all good. Uh, but this ad is, is pretty funny. My lord and I are looking to acquire a live-in slave mm. for sexual pleasure and housework. I mean, I thought BDSM was all about sex, but sure, fuck it. Do the dishes while you're at it. He is the dom of the house and the master. I am a nymph maniac switch, and I switch from slave, sub, dom. So you may never know what mood I'm in. This is how our household works. We also have a cat. Glad they threw that in there. Also, be available for some form of sex at potentially any given time. Whoa, what a life of surprise. What happens in your free time will be approved by the master. Well, that sounds pretty. How? Well, I, I mean, it's been going on for years. I mean, 
to really brainwash the shit out of somebody where you're being called master, that's, uh, I guess that takes some skill. I mean, shit. Pretty fucking terrible. Now, did Lizzie know what her new friends were into? Would she have been a fan of that? Care to partake? No, uh, was the answer from Lizzie's friends and family. She was like, not, in, not into that sort of thing. Wasn't her cup of tea. So back to the investigation. One that was at the point where Lizzie said she was going to Kat's, but Kat said she never came over. The police took both Kat and Seth in. Kat answered questions, but stopped talking after about two hours. She said Lizzie never came over. In the next room, Seth was telling a very different tale. Over the course of about 11 hours, Seth, his story changed. First he said she hadn't come. Then, well, then he said she had come over. And he said that now Lizzie was dead. The man accused of killing a University of New Hampshire student is being held without bail tonight. 29-year-old Seth Mugzaglia is accused of strangling or suffocating 19-year-old Elizabeth Marriott of Westboro, Massachusetts. Police have refused to say what led to his arrest. Marriott disappeared nearly a week ago. Her body has not been found. Seth Mazalia was arrested and charged with murder. In the dumpster behind his apartment, they found gloves and other murder items, including underwear with both his and Lizzie's DNA on it. See, Seth and Kat were big into BDSM and bondage, all that good stuff. But what had started out as people, you know, doing their thing, Seth had been more or less been descending from adults and consent into a violent, controlling, abusive rapist. Under the guise of, of bondage and dominance. What Seth told the police in that interview has never been released, but a couple of weeks later, Kat would come back and have a new story to, to tell. Or maybe just one version of it, at least. Seth was like sitting and the two of us were kind of just goofing around. It okay. started going from silly to sexual. It started um, getting a little more intense. That was that Lizzie had come over to watch a flick. They had started fooling around. The three of them got into bed, all aboard, do do to pound down. Kat said that Lizzie agreed to be bound. And drew a picture of, of what they did. I had tied harnesses on me before. Okay. It was the first time I'd ever tied harnesses on someone else. She then said Lizzie had a seizure during this and and died. She suffocated. It was an accident. Things had gone wrong, things had gotten out of hand. And then they had tried to cover it up. What they did was dump her body off Pierce Island and bring her car and park it in the university. It was too much to handle. I was freaking out. Okay. Now, to date, uh, this happened in 2012, it's 2022, Lizzie Marriott's body has never been found. And so that story that Kat told didn't really make sense to anyone. Um either those who knew Lizzie or those that had a brain. Lizzie had a girlfriend as well. She had been in a long-term relationship. So, you know, Lizzie wouldn't fool around, you know. So that's what Kat said happened. Well, what did Seth say had happened? How close are these two stories? Well, he said much uh, the same. Lizzie came over, they started um, having sex. There was an accident. Lizzie, she had a seizure. And she, she suffocated to death. Uh, and yeah, he, they, long story short, they dumped the body as well. The police found both to be untrue. What they, well, the prosecution said happened was that Lizzie had went over, Kat and Seth had tried to initiate sex. That was their whole thing. Lizzie said no. And so she was raped and murdered and then dumped God. in the sea. Yes, thank you. Good morning, Attorney Rossman. How are you this morning? I'm well, Your Honor. Good morning. Thank you for taking the time to have this arraignment with us this morning. Cat, too, would be arrested on conspiracy charges and hindering prosecution. She would be offered a deal, three years instead of over 20, Jesus if she testified Christ. against Seth. A bit of a no-brainer, she said yes. And now Cat would tell a different story. This is story number three, if you're, if you're keeping track. You'll figure it out fast enough. I love Fall of 2012, edits. Lizzie was attending the University of New Hampshire. 
her first semester there. She said Seth murdered Lizzie. It was no accident. Seth had full control over her, and he demanded she bring in a friend. In all hey guys, this move is really gonna be great. This for actually us. looks like a oh really God. good movie. Just type in the shining veil on stars. Are you shitting? Looks pretty damn good. No. August of 2012, six weeks before Lizzie was killed, Seth had texted Kat. It's time I punished you, you filthy little whore. You choose a friend. Any of yours will do, and you offer her to me. That I may do anything I wish with her, while you watch and assist in any way I might command you to do so. Wow. I think it would be fitting if the first thing you saw me do when you got back is pleasure one of your friends until they died of, though the word was blacked out, and only then turned my brutal attention to you. Kath had thought that was a-okay and obeyed. She had brought Lizzie, her new friend who had just moved to New Hampshire, that they had met at work. She was like, come on over. They had been texting that day and were due to just watch a flick. They hung out and then started playing strip poker. Seth wanted to take this to the next level, and Lizzie said no. Seth then asked if he could have sex with Kat while Lizzie watched. No, I'm grand, was the answer. He said something like if, if, if that was okay with her, and she said that it wasn't because she was in a very committed relationship and she just didn't want to be a part of that. This made Seth, um, a Seth who was very used to getting his own way, he was a big old baby. It made him very angry. So while Lizzie and Kat were, were watching a movie, he went on, he put on gloves, grabbed a rope, and came up behind Lizzie. He then strangled her to death. She was sitting right next to me. And he moved up close behind her. He was still on the bed. And he wrapped his throat, uh, the, the rope like, over her head and around her neck and started pulling on it. Um, she let out a quick noise. And then she sort of stopped moving. The whole scene was just so unbelievable and just so shocking that I just, it was just easier just to do what he said. Then, after she was dead, he had sex with her body. Oh my God. You had discussed with the jurors. Take a moment. <laughs> Judge, maybe we can take a break now. It was because of us. That she never got to live her life. Because <sighs> this isn't something we can fix. <laughs> she can never come back. I want fake tears. At one point, two friends popped over to the apartment one Roberta and Paul. They saw Lizzie's dead body. They advised to call an ambulance and then quickly note out of there. Oh, the body itself was naked with the exception of underpants. Um, at, the head was covered in a, a grocery bag. Her first thought, yeah, okay. we need to get these bags off. Is she still alive? I, I, kind of in the back of my head, I already knew that she was not. It was framed like it was an accident, that something had, had gone horribly wrong. It's almost like I broke something I shouldn't have. So then, Seth and Kat put her body in a suitcase, got in Lizzie's car, and drove out to Pierce Island. Then they took her body out and threw her off a cliff. Jeez. They then parked Lizzie's car back at the university. Then later, Seth, um, he tried to frame Roberta and Paul for the, well, he wanted to frame Roberta and Paul for the murder. They just popped in. 
he wanted to maybe tell some stories and get Kat to tell some stories that maybe they hung around a little bit longer than they said. He also tried to escape jail. He gave an inmate who was on the way out money to buy and then sell drugs for profits and then buy guns and escape vehicles to get to a country that had no extradition treaty. They would need pretty goddamn good escape vehicles to get all the way across the world. But this guy who he gave money to, he just left prison and <laughs> bought drugs for himself. <laughs> Seth was also completely batshit uh, and a big Skyrim fan. Can't fault him there, uh, you'll notice from this letter he wrote to Kat while he was in jail. Uh, he call In the letter he called Kat Scarlet, they had these little little names for each other. Dear Scarlet, my love, I love you, I miss you. This letter explains and begins spelling out rituals to reset and recall past lives. Of course, if all else fails, a return to Sovngarde is always possible, if not ideal. You need to follow through two lessers or one oh major. My God. For seven days, one major and two lessers or two majors. If at any point you do more than necessary, the extra energy will help. So within the time limit, do as many as you can, and then come visit me in Sovngarde. As you heard, the letter is kind of all about rituals and that sort of thing. Magic, weird shit. Uh, big into that kind of stuff, so he was. Jack shit it would do to help. <laughs> you cry without tears, Miss. Somebody go get her cry stick. If you guys don't know, for uh, actors who ha can't evoke that type of emotions, they have what's called a cry stick. And it, uh, yeah, it don't make your eyes watery. <laughs> I think I, uh, you could just talk about like animals, uh, dogs, or my daughter, and... I will be weeping in a heartbeat. So that's probably one upside to my acting career. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I've heard of some people putting onion slices in their pocket and then kind of, you know, squeezing on it to get a little bit of the juice and then rubbing their eyes like that. And it, I'm like, you guys are nuts. That's like overboard. The cry stick at least is a little bit safer. Donna? What? You cry without tears? I don't know. Um, sometimes I guess. The defense stuck with the accident story from before, and that cat was lying. Uh, I, I didn't really know what he had planned. You talked about taking her body out, you did not flinch. It's because I was making up a story. I was adding details, but a lot of it was just a story. It wasn't real. So I was able to push the images aside and just think about keeping up with the fake story I was telling you. And then, um, I mean, right now it's just, this is when it's really being told. This is when you really everyone's told finding you. out. I mean, this is when her family really gets to find out, and this is when I'm standing in this sitting in the same room She's as an him. Awful actress, awful, awful. Ultimately, one of the key pieces of evidence were the gloves that Seth had worn and were recovered. That showed he had planned it. He wouldn't have been wearing them if they had been having some kind of consensual sex, and it was an accident. Yep. Seth was ultimately found guilty of first-degree murder. Yeah. In the matter of State versus Seth Mazilia, the first charge. And I bet you more than anything, what he is probably thinking in his head is, fuck, I'm going to miss Skyrim Part 2. Not Skyrim Online, but Skyrim Part 2 or wherever, whatever part it's on. I bet you that what's, that's probably what's hurting him the most. And then his girlfriend. Hopefully he'll get to see commercials while he's in prison and, you know, have a TV and see commercials of, you know, Skyrim released or something, but I, I don't, I don't know what, you know, I don't know what channels they're allowed to watch or not, so I'm pretty sure they have a close eye on that shit. <laughs> Purposeful first-degree murder by strangulation. Do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Good. 
Guilty is the verdict of purposeful first degree murder by strangulation. So say you all members of the jury. Yes. 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 He was sentenced to life in prison with no chance of parole. Ms. Elia, or does he wish to speak? This is his opportunity under our Constitution to speak if he wishes. Ms. Elia, I'm not authorized. Mr. Ms. Elia? I do wish to speak. I did not rape and murder Elizabeth Marriott. However, I do understand the Marriott family's pain. And I did play a part in covering up her death. A mistake that I tried to correct when investigators came to me, I tried to sh I showed them exactly where I had left her. Lizzie's body. Unfortunately, they were unable to recover her, and for that, I am truly sorry. My heart goes out to the Marriott family, and I am very sorry for their loss. That is all. Kat McDonough was released from prison in 2016. Uh, good for her. I'm having a hard time deciding if she was maybe another victim? in this story too? I'll leave it up to you guys to decide that one, but I mean, she oh, certainly she... was completely coerced and controlled by a very abusive sack of shit. But that ends this one. A dark and disturbing guy, Seth was. And Lizzie seemed like such a such a beautiful spirit. Seth, not, uh, not so much. He was a wackadoo, a madman. Who, if it wasn't Lizzie, it would have been someone else. And he probably is, no, he is exactly where he should be. Though he probably enjoys it. I mean, after all, isn't prison? The ultimate bondage? <laughs> he is absolutely the funniest guy on YouTube who could create such good stories that are true crime stories and throw in that bit of sarcasm. I mean, I've said it before. He's like that friend that you'd want to have with you by your side for when somebody starts talking shit and he would just be boom right back in a second like have just something so creative <laughs> man go and show mike some love for real liked it already yep so something that i always say when i you know review an ollie hunter or Rhonda video i'm always disappointed in the view count but look at this he releases what's today the 20th he released this yesterday 489,529 views. Why isn't our boy getting that many views? That's what I'm concerned about, and that's what I've been complaining about. So, anyways. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Like always, Maiko, he's, he's, yeah, he's the shit. <laughs> he's awesome. Uh, but yeah, until the next video, uh, which I'll probably get out one more. And I appreciate you guys watching. So uh, peace.